Hello, Ice and Fire nerds. This is Chris, and welcome back to another House of the Dragon video. We had some leaks uh, as of late, a few days ago, so I apologize. This video is a few days late. But some news came out from the Portal House of the Dragon Brazil Twitter account. This is a Portuguese news site, essentially, that uh, leaks all these set photos. And we have a few more set photos to talk about. And really interesting, they think the set photos are Winterfell. Really cool to see Game of Thrones-esque sets being built again. And of course, they're almost wrapped up with filming as far as I know. But really quickly before we get into the pictures, I want to remind everybody I do have a fantasy novel out now called The Crimson Gods. You can grab your copy today. We have paperbacks hardbacks, audiobooks, as well as ebooks, Kindle, all that good stuff as well. So if you guys are interested in medieval fantasy, uh, a little bit of dark fantasy in there as well, epic fantasy, uh, be sure to check out The Crimson Gods. You can grab your copy. I'll have all those links in the description below. And by the way, for all you guys who have already read The Crimson Gods and left reviews on Amazon, I really, really appreciate it. We're almost up to 50 reviews. Reviews are the best thing you can do for new authors, especially to get their name out there and the book spread to more people. So anyway, let's jump into these set photos. Again, this uh, will contain spoilers potentially of locations, uh, but we won't go into any real detail or anything like that. But if you don't want to know anything about what you could see, you may want to click off the video. But again, this is just minor things as far as locations. Uh, we won't go into anything that we'll definitely see for sure. Uh, this is just all kind of speculation. Anyway, we have the first picture here. You can see here, this looks to be, you know, Winterfell if you, at first glance. And then when I first glanced at it, I didn't even really think more, much about it. Uh, but then you see this other picture here on the side that's more interesting is going to be the God's Wood. So if we look over here at the God's Wood, you can see that right beside this castle, uh, this same little castle, you see a weirwood tree. Now this is going to be obviously a God's Wood. Uh, and you would think what we all think about is the gods would at Winterfell. Now, obviously, this is a very small set, but they can do green screen, whatever. And of course, we don't really need much as far as the gods would when we had these similar shots in Game of Thrones before. So this uh, looks to be attached to this castle, but not necessarily. We're not really sure 100%. But first of all, I want to say that this is definitely not Winterfell. Now, I do think they will keep the kind of continuity between Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon and any other show that comes out with this, you know, ice and fire universe they're building. You can see here by the coloring, this looks to be one of the gates at King's Landing. You can see the comparison here between King's Landing and Winterfell as far as the coloring of the stone. Winterfell is more gray. You have the Stark Direwolf right above the main gate. So this could be one of the many gates of King's Landing. You have the Mud Gate, you have the King's Gate, you have so many different gates in King's Landing. It could be any one of those, and the general architecture seems to match King's Landing as well. But we do have a Godswood right beside it. Now, that doesn't mean it's part of this castle. It could just be a separate little set, but it kind of does look here like it's connected with the same coloring of the walls here. If you look at this side photo, where we're going to have some scenes of people coming out to the Godswood, perhaps having some conversations, whatever. So it's cool to have a little connection with this iconic stuff from Game of Thrones to connect it to House of the Dragon. You have these iconic symbols like the Iron Throne itself, werewoods and all that stuff. So, so who knows exactly what we'll get, but I don't think this is going to be Winterfell because I think it's a bit too early. Winterfell does come into play during the Dance of the Dragons, but that's going to be a little bit later. So I don't see this as a season one thing where we necessarily see Winterfell. Now we could of course see it. We could see Winterfell where they set up some things in the future with uh, Lord Cregan Stark, who is the Lord of Winterfell at the time. He does make a deal later on called the Pact of Ice and Fire. We'll talk about that in just a second. But there are a few occasions during the Dance of the Dragons that Winterfell comes into play and the Starks themselves. Now, of course, during the trailer, we did see how Stark participate in a tournament because we saw the sigils there. So they could change things up a little bit just to kind of bring them into the fray to bring back fans from Game of Thrones who love House Stark, etc. So they could change some things that would be very minor or whatever. But as far as the main story beats, I don't think they'll change much to Fire and Blood. I think they'll stick to the source material this time. I think they've learned from their damn mistakes. So if it's not Winterfell, this heart tree, this God's wood, uh, this particular werewood tree, where could it possibly be? Now again, the castle looks like King's Landing, but I don't think the heart tree here is going to be King's Landing because the God's wood in King's Landing is not an actual werewood. It's actually just an oak tree. This is in the south. There are not many werewoods left in the south after all the previous Andal invasions, all that good stuff, cutting down werewood trees. But perhaps they do slightly change that for the story and have a actual werewood as the heart tree. Now again, let me clarify that really quickly. Most castles, as you saw from Game of Thrones, have a god's wood. This is like a natural area inside the castle walls, but it is generally woods. And in the center of every god's wood, there is what's called a heart tree. Now in the north, and anybody that worships the old gods, this is typically a werewood tree. But in the south, many werewood trees were ripped out, burned, etc. So in King's Landing, you do have a heart tree, but it isn't actually an oak tree in the books. 
as opposed to a weirwood like would be in the north at Winterfell. So they potentially could change that and make the heart tree in King's Landing be a weirwood tree, but I think they'll stick to the source material. So where else could this possibly be? Well, it could be actually Harrenhal. Now, of course, we did see Harrenhal in Game of Thrones. This is the castle that's been melted by Dragonfire back in the old days when Tywin Lannister and Arya had that great conversation about the Targaryens and how they fought with dragons, etc. The Harrenhal was built by Heron the Black who worshipped the Drowned God. And Heron himself actually cut down a lot of weirwoods to build parts of Harrenhal. That's why they say Harrenhal is haunted because, as we know, anything that has a weirwood in it, like a weirwood throne, for example, in the Eyrie, People seem to hear voices, there's weird things going on, and they say Harrenhal is haunted. And although this wood is no longer connected to a tree itself, to the weirwood.net, I believe this has everything to do with what's going on with some of these places that we call haunted. So if Heron the Black built Harrenhal, why would he put a weirwood tree in his god's wood when he cut down a bunch of weirwood trees to build the damn thing in the first place? So if this is Harrenhal, it would be odd for Heron the Black to leave a weirwood in his god's wood or put one there, perhaps plant one there, he definitely did that on purpose if that's the case. Again, another option, it could be Winterfell. It could be Winterfell where they have some interaction with the Starks that set up you know, later events or whatever where we start to see the Starks. These were introduced to that era of Stark. They could want to at least go ahead and introduce some of these Starks, you know, the ancestors to the current Starks we saw in Game of Thrones. So perhaps it is going to be a shot of the same weirwood. That certainly is a possibility. But again, if that's the case, this is not Winterfell the castle that it's attached to. Now to get into a little bit of how Winterfell comes into the picture later during the Dance of the Dragons, at the beginning of the war, Rhaenyra Targaryen sent her sons Jaehaerys and Lucerys. They became her envoys to gather support from lords around the realm. Now Prince Jaehaerys Valyrian, also known as Jace, was the firstborn son of Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen and her first husband, Sir Laenor Valyrian, who we did see in the trailer. Now when Rhaenyra was crowned queen during the Dance of the Dragons, she did name Jace as Prince of Dragonstone and an heir to the Iron Throne. Although, again, her brother Aegon was already sitting on the Iron Throne, and this is what caused the dance in the first place. And Jaehaerys was also a dragon rider who rode the dragon Vermax. Jaehaerys, being her eldest son, was given the more difficult missions to be her envoy, and he did fly Vermax to the Eyrie to see Lady Jane Arryn, who did agree to support Rhaenyra if she defended the Vale of Arryn with dragon riders. Now later on, Jaehaerys also flew to the north, which included places like Winterfell and White Harbor. At White Harbor, Jaehaerys negotiated a deal with Desmond Manderly, the lord at the time, that the lord's youngest daughter would marry Prince Joffrey Valerion, his younger brother, once the war ended. But he also did fly to Winterfell to form the Pact of Ice and Fire, and maybe this is something we could see in the beginning of the war, perhaps it'll be closer to the end of the season, where he flies to Winterfell to meet with Lord Cregan Stark, and perhaps this conversation in the God's Wood at Winterfell. According to Grand Maester Munkin in Fire and Blood, Jaehaerys became really close with Lord Cregan Stark at Winterfell, as apparently the prince reminded Cregan of a younger brother who had passed away. It is said that they went drinking and hunting together, and the pair swore an oath of brotherhood. Now, Mushroom, who I've mentioned many times before, which I hope we have in this show, but we have not seen any evidence of that, he has the different tales in Fire and Blood that seem to be a little bit more realistic as opposed to Grand Maester Munkin. He says that Jaehaerys fell in love with Cregan's half-sister, Sarah Snow, and married her in secret in the Godswood of Winterfell. So if that's the case, that could be another thing we're going to see at Winterfell if this is, in fact, the heart tree at Winterfell itself. Now, of course, we talked about this before as well. This is when Vermax supposedly laid a clutch of dragon eggs at Winterfell and why there were so many theories about being dragon eggs and dragons under Winterfell, etc. This is when all that took place because Vermax apparently possibly laid a clutch of eggs in Winterfell. Of course, in Game of Thrones, we got no answers on that whatsoever. But Jaehaerys ultimately gained the North through the Pact of Ice and Fire, promising that if he were to have children, his firstborn daughter would be betrothed to Cregan's heir, Rakan Stark. So that is essentially the Pact of Ice and Fire, which never came to fruition. After the war ended about two years later, Lord Cregan did end up in King's Landing with some troops. He had sent troops earlier called the Old Wolves. This was kind of an older group of people to help out in some of the battles, but he himself never showed up because he needed to get another harvest in before he left Winterfell. He ended up being the Hand of the King for a day, and it was called the Hour of the Wolf, and this is after the war was over. And I won't get into any more details there, but this will happen at the end of the war, so if it happens in this show, it will be more in the later seasons. Again, depending on how far they go. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you excited about House of the Dragon, seeing these iconic things like weirwood trees? If this, in fact, Winterfell, I am really excited to see it again. But again, these leaks we're seeing here is definitely not Winterfell as far as the castle. 
but it could be a separate set piece where it would be used for maybe many gods would for that matter. So maybe it is Heron Hall and Winterfell, and we'll just see it in a different angle. Anyway, guys, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon, and a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers. And if you did what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button so we can let YouTube know that we are still here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.